This is a bad transition. This is a better transition. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why that's the case, as well as give you a quick tutorial on 10 really cool transitions that you can utilize in your next music video project. How's it going guys? Joshua Lefemi here in beautiful Brisbane, Australia. An interesting rite of passage when you first start doing video editing effects is the concept of transitions. And the purpose that I use transitions is to draw one's attention from one clip to the next clip in a way that's pleasing visually. In this video, we're gonna actually be talking about a technique that I've talked about in the past called deflection to transition from one clip to the next clip. So what is deflection? Deflection is a type of transition that allows your eye in the fraction of a second to be actually distracted as it leaves that first clip. After that quick distraction, the eye is immediately led onto the next clip. This distraction is just a clever way to hide the cut and makes the transition seem a lot smoother than a normal hard cut. Soft deflection takes place over a longer period of time, such as this smooth crossfade. Hard deflection, on the other hand, takes place over a short period of time, such as this quick overlay. Let's jump right in. First things first, I wanna remind you what a flicker transition is. We haven't talked about it in a few years, but there's a great chance that you might be doing it wrong. What does it actually mean to flicker footage? All flickering consists of is taking away individual frames from a specific part of an individual shot. Now I see a lot of beginners doing flickering like this, and why does that suck? It's because you're flickering on still footage that has absolutely no dynamic elements like camera movement. It just gives off this dull amateur look. So flickering can be done, of course, when you're transitioning in between scenes, but it can also be done in a place when you're trying to emphasize some sort of environmental instability. So in the beginning, when you're trying to decide whether to flicker in between footage or in the middle of footage, please only flicker within these five situations. These five situations allow the shot to be broken up and create this engaging dynamic look of instability. And these 10 specific flicker transitions that we'll be discussing in this video will be able to be categorized within these five situations. Situation one consists of flickering on speed ramps. First, you may ask, okay, how do I do a speed ramp? Well, let's say you have two consecutive clips, clip A and clip B. Use the blade tool to cut off the end of clip A, then right click on the clip and select speed and duration. In this case, we're gonna set the speed to 400%. Now zoom in on your timeline and with the blade tool, cut one frame wide holes in both pieces of footage where they both touch. This is called a basic speed ramp flicker. The next is similar and called the overexposed speed ramp flicker. Simply add an adjustment layer on top of the flickered frames in the last example, then throw a Lumetri color effect on the adjustment layer and increase the exposure level. All right guys, stop in the tutorial just for a sec. We created a CRT pack and boy, was it a pain to make. We thought it was gonna be pretty easy and it would maybe take a few days, maybe a week to create, but boy, were we wrong. It took the three of us almost six weeks to fine tune this CRT effect to where it looked perfect and realistic. We created one CRT effect to use for footage and then another CRT effect that you can use for titles or text. And as a bonus, we took 25 animated titles and fine tuned the CRT effect so that it looked perfect on them. Now you're probably thinking if Chris, Peter, and myself spent six weeks on this pack, then we're probably gonna make it pretty expensive to buy. Well, you're wrong. Because guess what? Some of you guys watching already have access to this pack and may not even know it. And for those of you guys that don't have access to it, you can actually get access to it for only $9. Before I tell you how to get it for $9, I'm gonna actually tell you that I'm selling this CRT pack on my website Luxury Leaks for $47. But here's the cheat code. If you already have an Envato Element subscription, then you already have unlimited access to this effects pack. I already know that thousands of you that watch the channel already have an Envato Element subscription and you can actually download this pack at no extra cost. And if you want access to this pack and you don't want to pay $47, then you can go the Envato Elements route and actually click the link in the description to get your first month for only $9. This will give you access to this easy CRT effects plus titles pack that we've been talking about, as well as unlimited downloads of the entire Envato Elements library. So click in the description and get started today. Now we have the inverted speed ramp from a flicker. Revert back to that basic speed ramp flicker that we did before and then throw on the invert effect, which you can find in the video effects folder on a couple of the individual cutout frames and voila. Next, we have the blurred speed ramp flicker. Again, revert back to the basic speed ramp flicker and add an adjustment layer on top of the flickered frames. Add a Gaussian blur to that adjustment layer. Set the blurriness to 260 
and make sure to check repeat edge pixels. Okay, we're done with situation one, which was of course flickering on speed ramps. Now we're moving on to situation two, which is flickering on camera movement. This involves adding a flicker between shots that incorporate either actual camera or artificial camera movement created in post. Remember you're flickering to try to emphasize environmental instability over the course of a transition, just to make a more visually engaging viewing experience. Like speed ramping, camera movement also offers an engagingly unstable feeling to the shot. Situation three involves flickering on secondary footage instead of simply a black background like we've been doing previously. Situation four is flickering on an offset overlay. If you've watched past videos, you'll remember that an offset overlay is really, really simple. Say you have two consecutive pieces of footage, shot A and shot B. An offset overlay happens when you create a duplicate of shot A, drag it on top of shot A, then you'd right click on that duplicated clip and click on speed and duration, then increase the speed by say 400%. Now reduce the opacity of that duplicated clip down to say 50%, then drag it to the end of shot A where it touches shot B. As far as the flicker goes, all you gotta do is flicker that duplicated clip on top. Situation five is something that I call holeless flickering. This type of flickering kind of differs because it strays away from the typical cutting holes in footage model because there's actually a number of other ways you can create that same flickering look but just using different methods. We're gonna discuss a couple of those methods. The first method is called the flip flicker. This literally involves flipping your footage every other frame. So you're still cutting up the footage into sections one frame wide but you're not removing any frames like before. You're just simply applying a horizontal flip effect to every other frame of footage instead. The second method is called changing your field of view. This again involves you cutting up the footage into frame by frame pieces, but again leaving all the frames in place and simply changing the scale or the position of each of these frames. Okay, everyone watching this video, I'm going to now teach you about flash overlay transitions. Check it out in the next video in this series. And if you made it to the end of this video, please make sure to put your IG name and your hometown in the comments below.